can you talk a little bit about your experiences living with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder? Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. It, I really don't like saying I have PTSD. Uh, I mean, it makes me nervous for them to say I have PTSD. I was hanging out in the breezeway at Walter Reed one night and we were playing cards and there's a guy making balloon animals next to us and uh, he was accidentally popping them and the breezeway amplifies sound so everything's twice as loud if not more and at first it was fine I understood it was just an accident and then a guy uh, I don't know who he was just purposely blew a balloon up and popped it and it just it's like you're not you uh, you just start moving and doing things and you don't know what's going on. I'll start seeing cars drive by or people walking towards me and all I can do is picture like where a weapon would be hidden. Organizations like the Armed Forces Foundation, it's necessary to let our troops and their families know that they're not forgotten. In times that we've uh, continued to have long deployments, and for many families, five and six deployments, it, it's getting tough and it's important for them to know that we're still there to help them, that there is no compassion fatigue. The post-traumatic stress disorder hasn't hit me as hard as it has uh, some of my brothers and sisters coming back. I've been very fortunate with that regard. Uh, however, there are occasional flashbacks. Um, sometimes there's nightmares to go along with the sleep that I get. Um, the big issue that I've had is difficulty sleeping. Mind racing, running scenarios, thinking what if, just general uh, inability to get to rest a lot. Um, you go back to a combat experience or a time or place that reminds you of combat experience. Um, a lot of the times triggered by sounds that sound like IEDs. Uh, I had the unfortunate pleasure of experiencing a couple of those, and so I know what they sound like. I believe that uh, every American should support the Armed Forces Foundation or foundations like this. I think we all owe our wounded military and, uh, and those who serve in uniform just a tremendous debt, and this is one way we can help to pay that debt. Um, but again, I've been fortunate in that, and it is a huge issue, however, I know a lot of my guys uh, have dealt with that a lot more and a lot harsher than I have, and it's something that needs to be very, very specifically addressed. We've been able to solve a lot of the problems with prosthetics and we've made a lot of advances in medicine. One of the things that we need to continue to draw attention to is TBI and PTSD. There's a lot we don't understand about the brain and there's a lot that we need to focus on our money, our, our energies, technologies in developing ways to help our wounded, our walking wounded. We don't have the visible wounds. The kind of war we are in puts enormous mental as, w as well as physical strain on our service members. So we're going to have to devote more assets, more research, and more help. The Armed Forces Foundation and other foundations, I think, are, do the job that the government doesn't do in many respects. A lot of soldiers and their families are being helped today who might not have been without the Armed Forces Foundation. I commend and applaud this organization for recognizing an injury that people can't see. They're heroes, and we should recognize them as such. And I, I think that any 
focus that we can give to these valiant people who come back from war is something we should feel very good about. I'm adjusting a lot better into, into my post-combat life and uh, I'm able to move and function quite normally now. Um, I personally, I give my complete endorsement because I'm living proof. I've experienced the benefit of what they have to offer and I know the good things that they're doing and as little as I can do to help, I'm gonna offer that up and continue to be there to support the Armed Forces Foundation. And I mean, they, they basically get us soldiers who lock up inside our rooms and just go through the paces to step outside of our shells and actually be alive again. I mean, they get us to be who we are once again. We have so many wonderful things that happen and so many wonderful people that we meet, um, especially our wounded guys that are so inspiring and fun times that we've had with them. In these times of economic turmoil and uncertainty, the Armed Forces Foundation stands ready to provide our military families with financial stability, mental well-being, and assistance with the transition back to civilian life. As our nation struggles to recover from an historic economic crisis, the Armed Forces Foundation's diverse array of assistance programs provide our heroes with basic necessities through our Family Assistance Program, a relief from the stress of military life through our morale, welfare, and recreation program, and help with the cost of education through our Career Counseling Program. As more and more of our heroes return from the global war on terror, the Armed Forces Foundation has witnessed firsthand the devastating effects of the invisible scars of battle, such as traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder. The Armed Forces Foundation has been a leader in calling attention to this issue and providing assistance to those impacted by it. My only, vet, my only message to our veterans is we can never thank you enough, we can never repay you. The nation is grateful and um, our hearts and our efforts towards making you sure that you know that all Americans, no matter how they stood on this or any other conflict, support you and we love you and thank you. What can we say but thank you to our troops, our families, thank you. Thank you for all your hard work, your dedication, your support and your love for our country and the Armed Forces Foundation will always be here to support you.